Hey everyone, and welcome to the sixth part in cracking ML interviews. So, here is the problem. Explain how convolutional neural networks, or CNNs in short, work. Okay, so what happens in CNNs is that you usually have as input a matrix, and you have another one that you use for convolutions, and inside your neural network you have another matrix which is called a kernel matrix, which you use to perform the convolution operation. Well, you basically move through the matrix, for instance, you put here in the first position, and you take the dot product between the elements in your kernel and the corresponding elements in your input matrix. And at the output, you obtain a value. Then you move your kernel one position to the right, and again you take the dot product between the elements in your kernel and the corresponding elements in your input matrix, and you obtain another value. Then you move it again to the right, you take the dot product, you obtain another value here, and so on, until you reach the end of the first row. Then you move to the second row, and again, you take the dot products between the elements in your kernel and the correspond elements in the matrix, and you obtain the first value for the second row. And again, you move to the right on this second row, you take the dot product, and you obtain another value. And again, you do that for all the elements in the row and for all rows. And this one here is the output of the convolution operation. And what does the CNN learn in all of this? Well, it learns the parameters in this kernel matrix here, so you can better predict those output values. Also, usually there is not a single kernel, like I've depicted here. There are usually multiple kernels. Let's say that we have C2 kernels. And for each one, we apply this convolution operation that we have explained here. Also, as input, we usually don't have a simple 2D matrix, but we have a matrix that usually also has some depth. Let's say that it has a depth of C1, and you can think of that like, let's say, an RGB image, and each dimension here in the depth represents the red, green, and blue matrices of that image. And now, if you want to use the same convolution operation as before, let's say that we want to apply this kernel here, then things don't really match, because you have this C1 here, this depth. Well, you can also say that we can take this kernel here and apply it on each dimension, but then what you get that the output is quite correlated and dependent on this kernel here, and this is usually not what we want. So what we do instead, is to take this kernel here and add depth to it, which is equal to the depth of your input, so in this case C1. And by doing this, we decorrelate a lot the depth of the output, because each output matrix has its kernel. And the way we apply the convolution operation in this case is pretty similar, because those two depths match. So you can simply take this kernel, put it here, and then take the dot product between the elements in this kernel and the corresponding elements in the matrix, and obtain an output value. Then shift it to the right, and when we are done with the first row, move to the second row, and so on. And also, similar to this case here, we don't have a single kernel, we have multiple kernels here. So we have, again, C2 kernels. And in the end, let's look at the signature function of the convolution operation. So you have something like conv2d, and it takes as parameters the input and your kernel. And your input has a dimension of a certain height, a certain weight, and C1 channels. And your kernel has a height of H1, W1, and it also has C1 channels, and because we have C2 such kernels, we also add this dimension here. And the output has a dimension of H2 and W2, which depends on things like what padding are you using, what stride are you using, and so on. And it has a depth of C2 here, because we have C2 such kernels. 
And that's basically it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.